We'll return to our magazine in just a moment. Chocolate chip cookies. Now I know I've got your attention. Last year we ate a quarter of a billion dollars worth of these little treats. And there's one woman who's very happy about that. Her name is Elaine Carlson, and she's responsible for the name on the bag, Mrs. Carlson's Cookies. Watch. I'm going to have a bite. Elaine Carlson of Palos Verdes, California, has always enjoyed baking chocolate chip cookies. And it made sense to her that if her 13 brothers and sisters enjoyed her cookies, others might too. So three years ago, she enlisted her family as helpers and started her own business, Mrs. Carlson's Cookies. I come from a very large family, I'm one of 14, and that was kind of my function in the family. I was the baker. Uh, my mom didn't have time to bake. So I baked cookies especially, and I've been baking these chocolate chip cookies since I was about, oh, about 12 or 15 years old. And I used to bake them for my family, and for presents and such, and for their friends. And pretty soon it got to be almost a little business, and so my brothers came to me with the idea that we should start a family business, and we would sell these cookies. Today, all 13 of Elaine's brothers and sisters help out. Twin brothers Patrick and Mike handle the company's finances. Mom and Dad help with babysitting duties. Brother Tim is the expert at cookie baking. And younger brother Ed is in charge of packaging. Sisters Ann, Martha, and Karen are cookie wrappers. And Elaine's husband, Arvin, is the chief package designer. Our family has always been close. Um, we still get together once a month. We have monthly birthday parties where everybody you celebrate everyone's birthday in that month. And I, it was for me, it would have been almost impossible to start the business without the family. We had a great time growing up. We really did. My grandfather distributed pies. That was his business. And when a holiday would come up, he'd always have extra pies. So he would sell them to us at cost. And we would put them in our little wagons, and we would go up and down the streets and sell pies to everyone. So we were always an enterprising family, always looking for a way to make money. <laughs> she did most of the baking. I didn't really, I seldom ever baked, and I uh, just let her do it. So she, that was kind of her love. <laughs> she used to bake them for the boys' birthdays. They'd want something special uh, for their birthdays, so they'd say, bake me a box of my own cookies so I can eat it all by myself. <laughs> uh -huh. My grandmother was a health food kind of a person before that became popular. Um, and she always baked with whole wheat flour and pure ingredients. She never used anything artificial. So when I made my cookies, I made them the same way. I used whole wheat flour, I used butternut margarine, which made it a richer cookie. We used real vanilla and we use a lot of chocolate chips. So if, if there was a secret to the recipe, I guess that would be it. So would you like to try Carlson's cookies? When we go into a new store, we always do a demonstration for them. We call them demos. And usually one of my sisters does it for me. And we go into the store, and we have little samples of cookies. And we stand in front of our, our display rack, and we offer the people in the store who are passing by a cookie. Um, our cookies taste so good that if we can get someone to actually put one in their mouth and taste them, then they are a, a buyer, a Carlson cookie buyer. And after almost 20 years of baking, Elaine hasn't tired of chocolate chip cookies. I am a chocoholic. I don't think I could be in this business if I didn't love chocolate specifically. Um, I, I have to have my fix every day, so I'll never get tired of chocolate chip cookies. Well, I don't have a cookie sheet, but I'm going to ask Susan here to... Uh to try one. Where do you go to school, Susan? Dexter Junior High School. Okay. You big chocolate chip fan? Oh, yes. All right. Try one. <laughs> All right. Have a bite. What do you think? Now take your time. <laughs> huh? <laughs> I don't know what the shelf life of these is, but... Uh, it's good. Is it good? A lot of chocolate chips. Great. You may finish it then. Thank you. Anybody else want one? Yeah. Okay. I think I'm in deep trouble. Well, as the old saying goes, I bet you can't eat just one, but that's all you're going to get today. We'll be right back. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Tuesday, October the 4th, and this is L.A. Today. You know, a question that a lot of folks are asking themselves is, how do I know that when I buy an airline ticket today for a trip that I'm going to take maybe two, three months from now, 
How do I know that that airline's still going to be in business when it comes time to depart on the trip? Well, that's one of the questions we're going to look into today as we take a look at how the turbulence in the airline industry could affect you. And coming up a little bit later, you want to grab your shopping cart because we're going to find out why you buy what you buy at the supermarket. There is a real science to it. But right now, we're going to go to Ann, who's going to tell us about a woman who's made quite a bit of money off a secret formula in her kitchen. Ann? <laughs> yes, we are, Chuck. It's fair to say that everybody needs more money. And Elaine Carlson has done what many women dream about. At 32, she started a business in her very own kitchen. She had a good idea and her own special chocolate chip recipe. Pretty special, we hear. She founded Carlson Cookies and went from baking 800 cookies a day at home to making 15,000 cookies a day in her bakery. And we're going to join her right now at her bakery in Torrance. Hi, Elaine. Hi. Are you there? There you are. Listen, 800 cookies a day in your own kitchen has got to be a tough way to start an empire. That is. It's cooking all day. I would imagine. I understand you had a lot of help from a very large family, lots of brothers and sisters. Yes, I'm one of 14, so uh, I had a lot of help. I don't think I could have done it without them. What did you pay them? Uh, cookies. <laughs> That's the advantage of having them. Right. Listen, why would a woman who uh, had been a real estate agent decide to start a cookie empire? Well, there weren't any really good cookies in the marketplace. And it used to be you either made them yourself at home or you would go and buy them at a bakery. And most bakeries are very commercial now. Um, so you just you have to make them in your own home. And, and a lot of women don't have the time to do that now. And we decided there was a, a definite need that people um, would like to buy our cookies, good cookies. Made like uh, from scratch in your own kitchen? Absolutely. We still make them here at the bakery like scratch. We still use butter. Um, we use whole wheat flour. We use twice as many chocolate chips as any other ingredient. And we can crack our fresh eggs, which in this business is almost unheard of. Listen, there have to be problems going from your own kitchen to a bakery. You need to uh, get bank loans. You need machinery. And you need to hire people. Did you have any trouble uh, getting people to back a cookie lady? Um, no, we, I think maybe we were lucky in that respect, and also our timing was good. Um, we um, happened upon a, a convention, and we got a lot of information from the convention, and when we took our, our idea and our product and our marketing to the banks, um, they decided to go with us and to give us a chance. Would you, would you say if somebody has a hidden talent that it's relatively easy to start your own business? No. no. <laughs> and it's always more work than you think it is. Um, long hours, always longer hours than you would spend at any other job. Um, it's your own business, so you don't mind doing it. Is it yes, it must be worthwhile because it is yours. Yes, and you it can is. Control it. You've also been raising a child while doing all of this. That's right. I had a little girl about a year ago, and at first it was rather easy. She came to work with me a week after she was born, and um, she entertained herself in her playpen, and it was, it was relatively easy. Now it's getting a little more difficult because she wants to be downstairs while we're baking, and she's walking, and so she has to stay upstairs. Now that you're the president of Carlson, do you have time to yourself anymore? How many hours a day do you spend at the bakery? Well, we're, I'm probably here eight to ten hours a day, and then um, if it's an eight-hour day, I take the rest of the work home with me. So you're right. Um, I don't do a lot of the things I used to. I don't t take classes, and I don't, I'm not as social as I used to be. But I really enjoy my business, and I'm enjoying my family. So I'm, I'm very satisfied. Any tips for other women who might like to start a cottage industry? Um, anticipate working twice as hard as it's twice as hard as you think it's going to be. And if you have uh, family and friends that can help you, um, it's, that's almost a must. It's very difficult to do it on your own. The way you start anyway. Where can I buy these cookies? They sound good. Yes, you can buy them at Robinson's, Ralph's in the bakery section, Gelson's, Irvine Ranch Market, uh, some of the Hughes and Alpha Betas, and hopefully soon in Vons. All right. And soon nationwide, no doubt. Thank you. Hopefully. <laughs> Thanks a lot and good luck, Elaine. Thank you. All right, there's a little piece of inspiration. A lady who knew she could bake discovered she could be a businesswoman, too. Chuck, what's up next? Welcome back to AM. This is Elaine Carlson. She's the president of Carlson's Cookies, which are available at Gelson's and Ralph's supermarkets. And, uh, and we'll give fabulous. a... They're fabulous. There it is. That's all it is. They're just Proof real good. Proof positive. <laughs> this good morning, job, though, she's going to show us how to prepare a Scandinavian holiday nut cookies. Yes, they're very rich and buttery, uh -huh. and they're the favorite of the Carlson family. Okay. Better than the chocolate chips? Well, we bake them at Christmas time. They're special so Christmas seasonal, cookies for us. Seasonal right. favorites, huh? Chocolate chip is always the favorite. <laughs> yeah. 
We start with a cup of softened butter. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to make, take the time to make cookies at home. Use butter, not margarine. Spend the extra money because the cookies really taste better. Mm -hmm. uh, they're much more flavorful. Okay. Take a cup of softened butter and add one cup of powdered sugar. Mm -hmm. Is it true that you have a pretty big family that uh, makes up the uh, Carlson cookie empire? Yes, I'm one of 14 children, um, and they all help. Great for testing and great for baking, too. In fact, you've developed your recipes by testing them on the brothers right. and sisters brothers growing and up. Sisters. And it? that's how we started Carlson's Cookies. Um, I couldn't make enough cookies for all of them and their friends, so the whole family got together. Wow. It's Sorry to interrupt, but uh, that's, that's some right. kind of story, isn't <laughs> it? it? 14 is. kids? That was oh, a quarter gosh. of a teaspoon of salt, mm -hmm. a tablespoon of water, and a tablespoon of vanilla. Again, it's pure vanilla. Artificial vanilla is going to give you an aftertaste. Okay, and that's a tablespoon is quite a bit, so yes, make a note that of that. Is. That's different <laughs> than the usual. I like the way you have that, just sitting around in the little shot glasses there. <laughs> Dual it's purpose. real <laughs> exotic. <Yeah. laughs> now we're going to add a cup of pecans. Mm -hmm. Can you use anything besides pecans if you've got walnuts hanging around yes, or something else? Yes, you can. Pecans are a richer tasting nut, so I recommend pecans. But you can use walnuts. Okay. This is my favorite time of year for this very reason. Mm -hmm. you know? Cookies. I know. Christmas and cookies just goes together. It's the best. It yeah. is. The last ingredient is two cups of whole wheat pastry flour. Now, in pastry all our flour. yes, in all our cookies, we use whole wheat flour um, for two reasons: nutrition and it gives the cookies a nuttier, a nuttier flavor. Now, does pastry flour mean that we're not talking about the all-purpose flour Correct. that one sees this at the store? This is whole wheat pastry flour, which is more finely ground. Where do you find that? In any grocery store, in the health food section. You just have to look. Huh? That's right. Help. Now, Harold has volunteered, correct, to did need I? this. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I did. did. You? Yes, I did. Sounds like my sergeant in the <laughs> army. Green, you volunteered. Come over here. You're gonna. Need, we're gonna need this by hand. Ah. Which is a. Thank you, doctor. <laughs> Okay. Hands of a surgeon Please. will need these go cookies. Right just in go, and just knead it. The warmth of your hands is going to work the butter into the rest of the ingredients. <laughs> and do this, you usually do it for two or three minutes. <laughs> is this a good recipe to have kids help you with? Yes, you this think? is a great part to let the kids do, is oh, to knead I've it by hand. <laughs> Excuse me, Elaine. Uh, I think I should have sprayed some gooey. Pam on my fingers here or something. Wait a minute. Is this all you do? You just kind of... Mm -hmm. you're, doing, you're doing wonderfully. Great. We couldn't beat you with a machine, kids. <laughs> <laughs> this all is right. wonderful. Irish, huh? Irish. Mm -hmm. Irish. We Irish. That's right. That's guys. Right. The best part of any cookie is the batter. Before it gets cold. That looks real good. Mm. Is that real good? That's really good. Now, how do you oh. propose we put this in the oven? <laughs> Just put it right here on the uh. baking sheet. And <laughs> okay. Now, bake my little fingers here at about 350, and they'll be done a little later today. Actually, it's 325 <laughs> for 14 minutes. <laughs> Believe me, I did love Jesus Manos. <laughs> I, we have a towel over there for you if you'd like to. We're going to lose an awful lot of cookie dough, though, if we don't scrape them off. <laughs> <laughs> do most people have this problem, or am I magnetic yeah. today? There you go. You're, you're pretty magnetic. <laughs> <laughs> this is a food scoop that I'm using to scoop out the batter. Uh -huh. And if you don't have one at home, you oh. can use a teaspoon and shape the dough into um, a ball about the size of a marble. Mm -hmm. Oops. Okay, I think that's good. Is that good? Think, yeah. And after you clean? scoop out a well, whole sheet, you can flatten them slightly. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. And then we'll bake them. And I have some in the oven that are baked. Let me get them. I know this will kill your diet. Not without the Chinese tea. I'm not <laughs> going to do it. Oh, let's see the finished product. Of course, we will have to eat. We will be sacrificed. Oh, those smell delicious. Yes, they do. And they... Now, you let them cool for a few minutes and then roll them in powdered sugar. Hovering here. Uh, <laughs> is it time yet? Yes, it's yeah. time. It's time. <laughs> we like the it important much. part is after you roll them in powdered sugar, seal them in an airtight container, and don't eat them for a day. When you're baking with butter, these I baked yesterday. When you're baking with butter, mm -hmm. it's better to let them age overnight so the butter flavor really comes through. Do you do that with your chocolate chips yes. and the other yes. two? Yes, they're all made with butter. How do you keep people out of them for a day? That wouldn't work at my house. <laughs> <laughs> no. I hide them. You hide them. <laughs> Well, these are okay. terrific. They are. Wow. Thank you. I tell you what, Elaine Carlson, President Carlson's Cookies, mm. Ralph's, Gelson's, if you'd like a copy of this particular recipe, please send a self-addressed stamped envelope to, write this down now, 2808 Oregon Court, 2808 Oregon Court, building K3, <laughs> Torrance, California. The show's going to end here before I get through this. <laughs> And the zip is 90503. 90503. Okay. I'm keep going. I'm You're all. <laughs> <laughs> I knew Still you ahead. Were do that to me. Still ahead in this hour. 
how to hide your unwanted pounds to prepare for the holiday parties. But first, survival tips for holding on to your job. Please stay with us. Kitchen. Time now to grab your copy of Thursday's Herald Examiner newspaper and follow along as we prepare AM's special recipe of the week. Elaine Carlson, the president of Carlson's Cookies, is going to show us how to whip up a delicious lemon dainty. Hello there. Hi, how are you? We're sounding Happy a little birthday. husky. Yeah, oh. how do you like that? Sexy, don't you think? Oh, Not husky. Kind of Lauren Bacallish, <laughs> eh? <laughs> Thank you for the happy birthday. I appreciate it. What's our cookie monster, so to speak, doing with a lemon dainty? Well, you know, once in a while you have to switch from cookies to a different kind of dessert. And uh -huh. this is one of my favorite. It's very light, and you can serve it with any meal. You can serve it with a, a light summer meal, or it goes with a heavy kind of a pasta or a red meat dish. That Lay. is very light. <laughs> wait a minute here. We're you know, talking this light. Is, wait a minute. <laughs> this, this is sugar. Is the most, the, it has the most calories in the recipe. The sugar has the most calories in the recipe. If it didn't have sugar, it would be even less. It would be like 100 calories. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, you have to have a, okay. you know, every so often. You right? got it. You start, this is a cup and a half of sugar, by the way. And we're going to add six tablespoons of melted butter. Mm-hmm. That's only a cup and a half of sugar. I tell you, I yeah. don't eat much sugar. It looks like, you know, a <laughs> yeah, it pound like and a half. Huh? Um, and we're going to have four eggs. And the egg, it's egg yolks, actually. We separate the eggs ahead of time. And the egg whites, you put in a separate bowl and beat them till they're stiff. Mm -hmm. So this is just six, or excuse me, four egg yolks. Four egg yolks. All four right, you can follow yolks, along, okay. as we say, in the Herald Examiner. That's right. We mix, we'll mix that in together. And next, we're going to add some flour. Now, I usually use whole wheat flour when I bake, but this particular recipe, the sponge cake is, the whole wheat flour would be too heavy for the sponge cake. Mm -hmm. So a, a pastry flour or a unbleached flour, something like that would be better. So that's a quarter of a cup of flour and just a dash of salt, um, a quarter of a cup. Excuse me, a quarter of a teaspoon. quarter of a teaspoon. I, was gonna I, I thought you were going to catch me on that <laughs> one. No, no. I, you know, I was actually I'm thinking of the name of this. I love the name of it, a lemon dainty. Lemon dainty. It's, it sounds like the kind of thing one, one would uh, enjoy with pinkies up, so to speak. You know, the lemon dainty this morning. Two cups of milk. Mm -hmm. And this is whole milk, but you can use low fat also if you want to make it even less calories. Mix that together. And as I mix this together, why don't you finish grating that lemon for me? <laughs> Either of you? No, no, <laughs> I'll take it. I know you're good at that. Is this it? Is this yeah, go ahead and finish it. Now, we're using two lemons, and as we grate it, you not only grate the, the yellow skin itself, but you get some of the rind underneath. Mm -hmm. We're going for a total of about a quarter of a cup, two lemons. Two lemons will give you about a quarter of a cup. Hey. <laughs> Where's Oops. Uh -oh, <laughs> we're in trouble now. <laughs> okay, that's Don't good. Carry that's that's away now. <laughs> that little baby. You're that's dangerous great, Harold. In you the did kitchen. a great Thank job. You okay, very here much. we go. This is why <laughs> they lemon usually rice. don't let me do this. <laughs> yeah. You take that Come same. At all? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna take that same lemon though, and we're gonna cut it in quarters and juice it. Mm -hmm. um, Remember, if you drop yours on the floor, go ahead and <laughs> choose a new one. <laughs> So we're just going to juice the lemon, and you want about a third to a half a cup of lemon, because depending on the season and the size of the lemon, it's going to give you a different yield mm -hmm. in the juice. And, <laughs> and you take the seeds out, but we're not going to we're not right going now, to so today. we'll put them right yeah. in. And then you go ahead and you add the egg whites, the beaten egg whites. I want you to help me with that. All just, at once. Yeah, all at once. Mm -hmm. And you fold it in. This seems and pretty fragile. Can you, uh... it, it is pretty fragile, and we are going a little fast, but for today, that'll have to do. Mm -hmm. But I mean, will this hold? Will this, uh, yes. will this last for a while? Yes, I'll show you. I made one last night, which we'll taste this morning. Now, after you fold the egg yolk, or excuse me, the egg whites in, you take a one and a half or two quart casserole dish that's buttered and pour the dainty into the dish. Mm -hmm. And then the dish is going to go into a water bath. On those water baths, Elaine, how much water do you have to add? Well, in the okay, pan? I'm going to show you. Here, here's the pan, and I usually put the pan in the in the oven first on the rack, and then pour the water in it. And it's about a quart of water. A water bath. Yeah. What it's doing is it's keeping the custard on the bottom from boiling. Otherwise, yeah. if the custard comes into direct contact with the the oven itself, it's it will boil. Okay. Here's the prepared the finished dainty that we made yesterday. And mm -hmm. as it bakes, it separates. So you get a lemon custard sauce at the bottom and you get a very light sponge cake at the top, which really melts in your mouth. So we're gonna go ahead and taste it. Low in the calories, best part, this is, this is Howard's, or Harold. All things are relative My now. mouth and my voice are not oh, working today. Oh, you're doing today. a great job, it's not easy. Oh, you're right, look yeah, at that see, on the bottom. The custard. We'll give it to Harold Ooh. first, because it's his birthday. Oh, the birthday yes. boy gets And to I usually have garnish dainty. it with a little bit of whipped cream and a sprig Binkies of up. mint uh -huh. and a lemon wedge. Oh. Isn't that good? It just melts. 
You know, I'd go great with that Grand Marnier would be just one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it? Like, mm. Come on, you know it. Come on. Don't act innocent now. You can, you can serve oh, it warm or cold or chilled, either way. So it, it's very versatile, oh, really. Delicious. Isn't that wonderful? That is great. Nice. And as you Again, said, about 300 calories, that's all. And this recipe is in yesterday's edition of the Herald Examiner. No kidding. Good stuff. Excellent. Thanks so much. Thank Elaine, you. by the way, is the president of Carlson's Cookies. Coming up, actor John Hillerman, but first, protect yourself from crime with foolproof techniques.